he was just like, so two of the schools that you've been working with don't want to work with you anymore. I was like, huh? Bata Bata is the name of the dance we do down the Johannesburg way. absolutely amazing during this messy COVID season. I hope you are doing amazing. I hope your family's doing amazing. Your friends are doing amazing. And I just hope everyone is trying their level best to stay indoors and be safe out on the streets because COVID is back with a vengeance. Like, oh, homegirl does not want to give up. <laughs> I'm so sick of her. Um, as you can see by the title of this video, um, I will be telling you a story of how I got COVID, I think like two or three months ago. Um, and yeah, guys, it was real. <laughs> it was real for reals. Um, but before I start, I just want to say the reason why I am doing this video is because I feel like it's very important to speak about COVID. Um, I feel like it's very important to speak as much as we can to de-stigmatize, de right? Is that the word? But like to get rid of the stigma surrounding COVID because we are almost three years into the pandemic. There's absolutely no need for us to be stigmatizing COVID anymore. We have done the research. We have read up on how the virus works. We have read up on how it mutates. Even though we don't have the answer, we have a basic understanding, a general understanding of how the virus works. So I did this video to be like, you know what, like COVID exists and, you know, anyone can get it. You know, it doesn't matter. Like COVID does not discriminate. That's one thing about homegirl. Like she will even get you when you least expect it. So I really wanted to do this video to say, um, yeah COVID exists um and you know that's just how it is yeah so before i start the story i need you to get your wine glass because it's going to be a lengthy story and you guys know i love talking and i can talk for years and years and years so please get your wine okay so before i start this video i really have to explain how my job works because it's part of the video in some way so here we go. I am hired by an agent. Okay. Usually agents, they don't hire you. They are the middleman between you and getting the job that you want. But in this situation, my boss is an agent and he's a registered like agent who hires teachers and we are permanently employed by him. So how that works is he hires all of us. He has a myriad of teachers under his belt and what he does is he has contracts with different private schools or different hagwons or academies or afternoon schools or whatever you want to call it so the way that it works is i'm hired by him permanently and he has different contracts with these schools so he sends me to work at different schools Depending on the situation, I can work at one school or three schools for a few months until the contract ends, or I can work for different schools in different weeks. Luckily, in my situation, for the longest time, I worked with the same schools uh, for like months on end. Um, so when I had COVID, I was working for three schools at the time. Um, and the scheduling was monday and wednesday it was a different school tuesday and friday i was working for a different school and then on thursday i was also working for a different school so i was working for three schools i hope that's not very confusing if you are confused like let me know i'll try and clarify it further but that's how my situation was my work situation let's get into the story so in korea First of all, I contracted COVID 
at the end of September, towards the end of September. So in Korea, um, there is a holiday called Chuseok. Chuseok is a very family oriented holiday. Um, if I'm correct me if I'm wrong, but um, I believe that Chuseok is a is a holiday where Koreans honor their ancestors and they honor the the adult and you know family and all that stuff. So like they dress up in their hanbok, which is like the the traditional Korean clothing, and they meet up with their families and all that stuff, and they just have a good time, you know. So it's a very family oriented holiday. It's like I don't know, maybe like Easter for Black people. In South Africa, I think. I don't know. Um, so yeah, like so it was Chuseok. So when we Chuseok is a holiday. So like when we get Chuseok, like everything closes down. Um, like businesses shut down for a few days and all that stuff. And we also get the, the holidays off. So we get like four or five days off. Depending on where it falls on the week, it could cover the whole week. And you know, because the weekend we don't work, so it could be the whole week where you have a holiday, which was the case this year. Um, so for Chuseok, because I hadn't seen my friends um, for like three months, like I wanted to visit my friends, you know, I was just like, oh damn, I haven't seen my friends in a long time, like I miss them. And as you know, like we don't have family in Korea, like we are foreigners in Korea, we live overseas, my family is not here, so your friends overseas immediately become your family. Like when you find a, a close knit of friends, you immediately make them your family, you know? So in my head, I was like, I wanna go see my family. And that's what I did. Um, as soon as like, you know, I finished on the Friday for Chuseok, I packed my bags, I left and I went to go to my friend's house. I went to go to Karen's house. Um, and we chilled for like a few days and all that stuff and like we you know cooked we drank indoors and like we just chilled as friends we spent quality time most of our quality time was spent indoors I remember there was just one time where we went out to go have lunch and have drinks and all that stuff but that was the only occasion but other than that we were indoors the entire time so yeah like we spent chew sock indoors and stuff and then um, Chuseok was almost over, you know? And I remember as well, like my other friend had a birthday somewhere in that mix. So like we went to a hotel and stuff, like we had dinner at the hotel, no lunch, brunch. And then like we had drinks afterwards and all that stuff. And then um, we went back to our respective, you know, hotel rooms and yeah, that weekend ended and then it was obviously time for me to go back to work. Chuseok was over. I was just feeling sad about everything, but it is what it is. Sometimes life is not fair, but whatever. Um, went back to work on the Monday. I remember going back to work. I was feeling exhausted as hell, naturally, because I was just, you know, very active. <laughs> uh, went back to work and stuff. And um, I think one thing that I forgot to explain, oh, is that um, I also had a morning school with all my crazy different schools that I had to work at. I also had a morning school that I had to work at, I think in September and October, between, no, August, between August and September, sorry. Uh, I was holding the fort at that morning school. I was holding the fort for a South African girl who was supposed to come through but then like because of covid and the visa processes being delayed she could not come on time so my boss asked me to fill in for her at that school so all my schools i work in the afternoon in the mornings i don't work so that was the only morning school that i had to work at and that school specifically was consistent it was a monday to friday schedule so woke up on the tuesday after the Monday, I, I went to work in the morning, taught the kids, and this is where the story begins. Sheriff, he's over here. As I step out, obviously now I'm rushing to the bus stop. Um, my boss calls me. I'm like, yo, oh God, what is it now? So he's like, where are you right now? I'm like, no, I just finished, you know, with the morning school. Um, I'm about to make my way to my afternoon school. Like, what's the matter? Like, what's happening? And then he's just like, um, 
no so you're often in school don't go there because um the school is closed there's a covert case i'm like oh okay to be honest when he said that i was happy <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> i wasn't happy obviously oh sorry oh. excuse me i wasn't happy obviously because there was a covert case I was happy because I was getting the rest of the day off because I've been tired. Remember, like I was coming back from my friend's place. Um, so I didn't have a break, basically. Like, so I was happy to be going back home to sleep. So he was like, there's a COVID case. So you don't need to go to that school today. I was like, ah, thank the Lord. And I had been craving, I remember like I had been craving like some pasta. As soon as like he told me that I dropped the call and I went straight to the supermarket, I bought like some linguine pasta, I bought like some, you know, minced beef and stuff. I wanted to make the spaghetti bolognese. Um, and yeah, that's what I did. I got some ingredients and stuff. And when I was in the supermarket, he calls me again. I'm like, well, that was short lived. I thought like when he called me during that time, he was going to be like, Okay, so there's another school that I want you to work at right now. Can you come? Because my boss is very slick. Like, there's nothing such as a free lunch. So I just knew, like, maybe he wants me to go work elsewhere. So I pick up and I'm like, hey, Mr. Oh, I nearly say his name. Okay, I'm going to call him Mr. Ruben. I'm like, hey, Mr. Ruben. Um, what's up? And then he's like, so the student that tested positive um, was a student in your classroom, okay? So because you were a close contact with that student, can you please go get tested so that you can also be safe? In my head, I was like, oh, that's normal, that's fine. Like, I don't mind going to test uh, because honestly, when he said that to me, I was not alarmed, like, oh my God, like, do I have COVID? I did not even think I had COVID at that point because I was just like, I feel fine. My breathing is fine. I am not coughing. I am not hyperventilating. I don't need to go to the hospital. Like everything is fine. I can even run a marathon right now. I'll be still good, you know? So I'm just like, okay. Like I told him I'm at the grocery store. As soon as I'm done with this, I'm gonna go get tested. He was like, perfect. And then I finish my shopping, I put my things, I go to my apartment, I put my bags down, and then I go straight to the tasting center. The tasting center is not very far from my place. It's like probably like two minutes away if you're walking. I go, I go get tested and stuff, and still I'm not worried about anything because I'm like, there's no way that I have COVID. Like I'm as fit as a fiddle. Like I, there's not even a single sign. I don't even have a headache, you know? Um, go back to my apartment. I cook, 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 cook. Um, make my spaghetti bolognese. It's delicious as hell. And I watch Squid Games. And I remember, like, I just snapped. I literally, like, fell asleep on my couch because I was so tired. I was so tired. Um, I woke up, I think, like, around 5 a.m. in the morning. And then I went upstairs. I live in a loft apartment, so I had to, like, go upstairs in my apartment and sleep. Um, so yeah, I slept and then um, at like eight o'clock, 8.30, somewhere there, I just wake up to a lot of like missed calls. <laughs> like I hear my phone buzzing a lot. There's just a lot going on. Like. My phone is vibrating left, right, and center, you know? And I'm just like, what the hell is going on? Hey, um, this is the Changwon Health Center. Is your name Nico? Um, yeah, like yesterday you went to go get tested and all that stuff. So we just want to ask you a few questions. And like, guys, like they're just asking me all these questions. I'm very confused as to what's happening. I do not know what's happening. Then I get another call. Hey, this is the Masan Healthcare Center. And all these people are speaking Korean, by the way. At this point in time, I hadn't started learning Korean, so I cannot hear a single word. I can hear the popular phrases that they're saying, but other than that, 
you know these people are going on and i'm just telling them like i cannot speak korean like i'm apologizing like i cannot hear anything like and they keep trying to also speak english and all that stuff like um, yeah there's a student there's a like at my workplace someone tastes, and i'm just like yeah you guys are telling me all these things like i know what's happening like I, I heard it all from yesterday but like why are you contacting me like what's happening and no one is giving me a steady answer after a solid hour of not understanding what these people are saying and getting multiple phone calls i just started giving them my boss's phone number I was like, okay, direct all the calls to my boss because obviously, like, we are not making any progress. I cannot hear what you're saying. And then they all call my boss and stuff. They are asking for a lot of details. Like, they are asking me about my whereabouts. They are asking me for screenshots of my bank accounts. They are asking for my passport numbers. They are asking for my bank. I'm just like, why are you asking for all this information and no one is telling me what's happening? I don't understand. You know? So now I'm also messaging my boss. I'm fuming. I'm pissed. I'm just like, why? You know, my information is being demanded left, right, and center. And I'm being threatened. Like, they were threatening me if I was not, you know, willing to release the information. Threatening me with arrests, with fines, with being sued. And I'm just like, why am I being threatened left, right, and center when I haven't even gotten my results yet? No one has even said you tested negative or positive like i'm just being threatened left right and center you know and after some time my boss like obviously was talking to them and stuff and he messaged me he's like oh they told me that you tested positive that's the part that pissed me off because korea is very effective in terms of them telling you you know about your results like if you get tested today next morning by eight o'clock or by nine o'clock in the morning you'll get a message okay you tested negative but when you test positive they will never say it i don't know why like they will go in circles and circles and circles and circles and circles like so that's what pissed me off so after like my boss told me that i had tested positive i was answering phone calls for like the whole day like responding to text messages left right and center and then i got assigned to one person who was knowledgeable about my case how everything happened and he was just you know dealing with me like just me and yeah way to like him and i were talking for the longest time and i remember um he was telling me oh yeah like since you tasted positive you're gonna have to quarantine in your home and all that stuff so I was off the knowledge that I was going to quarantine at home, right? So fine, I answer all these questions from 8.30 in the morning until like 5-ish in the afternoon. Now I'm tired as hell and stuff. And, you know, I go to bed. The next morning, I receive a call very early in the morning. Um, and it's... From the Changwon Health Center and this lady can speak English you know fairly well and she's like um so there's an ambulance that's coming to pick you up tomorrow at one o'clock I'm like ambulance <laughs> I'm not dying what's going on hmm that makes me frightened and she's like you are going to quarantine at the hospital until your quarantine date comes to an end. I'm like, no, man, I feel like you got the wrong person because I just spoke to this healthcare agent yesterday and he said, I'm going to quarantine in my hospital, in, in, my, in my apartment. Um, and I thought that was fitting because I live alone. I don't live with any other people, so I'm not putting anyone else in danger. Like, I'm just going to quarantine my apartment. I'm going to sanitize everything. I'm going to de-sanitize or whatever the situation is. I'm going to make sure that everything is, you know, up to standard. They're like, no, that's not how it works. Like, that agent, you know, gave you false information. Um, you are going to quarantine at the hospital. 
At this point, I'm panicking. I'm like, ugh. Ugh. At this point, I'm messaging everyone. I'm messaging my friends. I'm messaging my mom. I'm like, this is the situation. And obviously, like, people back at home are stressing because they do not know what the hell is going on. And I'm giving them all this kind of information. And I was low-key stressed as well. I was not stressed before, but when they told me I had to go to the hospital, I was like, and there's an ambulance coming. In my mind, I just pictured a scene being caused downstairs with the ambulance siren ringing and like people seeing me, you know, with my bags going to a COVID hospital. I was like, oh. And this is the reason why I feel like it's so important to destigmatize COVID because all those feelings that I was feeling was because COVID was heavily stigmatized in the whole world, not just in Korea, you know? And then on the Thursday, it was D-Day, my bags were packed and I was picked up by the ambulance to go to the COVID hospital. So I remember like the procedure, like the lady called me like, I think two hours before. She's like, yeah, I hope all your bags are packed and all that stuff. And you have taken every essential that you will need um and we're gonna come and pick you up like two hours later you know and she was like when you exit the building do not take the elevator just use the stairs and i live on the seventh floor so i had to like carry my suitcase down the stairs you know to the ground floor and all that stuff and the ambulance was there waiting for me got in the ambulance and stuff and like when i was in the ambulance there were two other people there with me there was one old korean guy and there was one young korean guy who was probably the same age as me um and we all rode in the ambulance i said my greetings as soon as i walked in and the ambulance took us to the crew the, the quarantine hospital um as soon as we got there i just remembered like the ambulance ride was super short um, and the hospital, I just figured, was super close to my place. Um, it was like a seven minute walk, at most, to my place. Um, we got off and stuff, and I just remembered the hospital when we got there. It was super quiet. It felt like it was haunted. time in Korea like the cases were relatively low I think we were riding on like 300 cases at most per day so the cases weren't that high um, so the hospitals were very empty um, so I remember walking into that hospital usually like when you are in a hospital you expect like to see patients all over like nurses like running around and all that stuff you expect like it to be busy you know but I walked in and it was dead silent and I'm gonna put like some footage of the hospital like as I speak um, I walked in it was super silent and all that stuff and we signed in um, and then after signing in and stuff um, they gave us like a high blood pressure monitor they also gave us, a, I think it was oxygen, yes, an oxygen monitor that you put on your finger. What else? They also gave us something else I forgot. They gave us three things to test. And every morning, like every morning and evening, we were supposed to test our levels, how far or how high they are, and put them on an app. There's an app that we also had to download and, you know, put our results every morning. Um, and every evening so that's what we did and then we went up to our room um, so the nurse like the quarantine nurse took me up to my room there was another plot twist when we get to when we got to the room it was also giving barra yo guys that hospital was bad it was so bad <laughs> yo when I think about it, like, uh, I almost lost my mind at that hospital. Giving it the title of a mental hospital is very fitting because I almost lost my shit. So I 
walk in and the biggest plot twist was one of the guys the guys that was younger the guys that i the guy oh, i'm getting drunk the guy that i said was the same age as me um who was in the ambulance turned out that he was going to be my roommate <laughs> huh i did not know why they gave us roommates it was beyond me i had to come to terms right there and then that i'm gonna have a roommate for like 13 or 14 days quarantining you know you might think it's not a bad idea to have a roommate to quarantine with and all that stuff but the biggest thing was that he did not speak an ounce of english i did not speak an ounce of korean at that time so it was very hard to understand each other so majority of the time like literally 98 percent of the time i'm not even exaggerating we said nothing to each other it always had to be non-verbal cues like we always had to communicate by doing literally i remember like the first day i was super tired man i just slept all like all day you know and when dinner because also they provide us dinner obviously when dinner breakfast lunch and dinner when dinner came i was sleeping so like they always put our dinner like outside the door um and i remember like he brought my dinner um and he put it next to my bedside while i was sleeping and then when i woke up my dinner was next to me and i was like oh my god he was the one who probably put the dinner like next to my bedside because the nurses after our quarantine commenced they weren't allowed to come in our rooms you know so the only person who had access in the room either than me was him so yeah like i remember telling my friends i was just like ah oh, this guy like he's so nice like he put like you know my dinner next to my bedside i don't know what to say to him and stuff like you know i don't know what to say and my friends was just like write a nice message for him and translate it on your phone and you know tell him that you are thankful and all that stuff and that's what i did and then the days went by the days went by and stuff and you know when you are stuck um in a room with someone i started being like oh my god this guy is like cute <laughs> Guys, I was in love with my roommate. I'm so embarrassed. Oh my goodness, I'm so embarrassed. I know this sounds so creepy, but like he was there. There was nothing else to do, but I would watch him sleep sometimes. I'm like, he's so beautiful. <laughs> and I want him to sleep next to me. <laughs> a few days into my quarantine, I was just hit with the biggest news i was just like you know so my boss messaged me and he was just like so two of the schools that you've been working with don't want to work with you anymore i was like huh i was in pure shock i thought i might have misheard you playing with me You know and he was just like so like the parents are very concerned that you had COVID and stuff and you know they don't want you to come back to work for those schools and that was just the final nail to the coffin for me because I was just like wow you know like I cannot believe that like we are being treated this way in this sense yeah so everything was basically being blamed on me um the one school that i worked at used me as a scapegoat and they used the fact that i went to go visit you know my friends during chuseok um that i contracted COVID there and i spread it to my students and that was the narrative that was going around. So many parents of the other schools that I was working at were just like, 
cut him loose. Um, yeah, that was a very sad situation. Um, it was a very upsetting situation because I just could not fathom how people could even think like that. Um, but I was just like, it is what it is. I got over it very quickly. I also got super sick. Not super sick, that's an exaggeration, but I got very sick during my quarantine period uh, because my roommate at the time was a lot sicker than I was. I personally believe that his viral load was higher than mine um, because when I entered the facility, it was, I was not sick at all. Like I was not sick. I started getting sick like two days after being like at the hospital, you know? And my roommate was already sick from the get go. He was coughing heavily. He was having sleepless nights because he was coughing a lot. And I just started getting a lot sick, man. It was just so bad. <laughs> it was not bad in a sense that like I was needing a ventilator or, but it just got so bad. Like I remember like there was a time when I couldn't sleep because my chest was feeling so heavy. Um, I had to sleep on my side. Yeah, it was just, oh, it was a mess. It was a little mess. So I got fired essentially for contracting COVID. But my actual boss, the, the agent, the one that hired me, um, he's a very nice man. He's super understanding. And he was just like, don't worry, I'll find other schools for you to work at. Like, you know, this doesn't have to set you back in any way. And even though I was fired from those two schools for contracting COVID, he still decided to pay me my full salary. You know, he was like, I'm still going to pay you full salary, even though you did not work for the period that you were, you know, diagnosed with COVID. Like, I'm still going to pay you. Like, don't worry about it. On the last day, um, I remember feeling very sad because I enjoyed my roommate's company so much, guys. Like, I don't know, maybe it's the Pisces in me. I fall in love with people so quickly. And not necessarily like romantic interests like even friends and all that stuff like i fall in love with people's energies and auras if you are an authentic genuine person like i will fall in love with you you know not necessarily like i want to date you like but i want to be friends with you i love your energy i love your just presence you know and even though me and my roommate did not say anything to one another, I just fell in love with his energy. He was such a nice person. Ugh. Like, it's the little acts that he was doing that made me realize that this is just a genuine, wholesome guy. Um, and yeah, like, you know, that happened. And then, like, the final day, um... We checked out of the hospital. There was also an entire procedure to check out. Like we had to sanitize everything and we had to wear like latex gloves. Um, we had to like wear like a cap thing and like wear like full gear, I guess. downstairs there was an entire procedure for it and throw away everything that we had used um then like yeah that's how i was free from covid and that was my covid experience it was very eye-opening it was very mind-boggling at times it was very frustrating it was very depressive it was very anxiety prone it was very yeah for the most part i felt like i was coming undone um but 
I'm glad that I experienced that. Um, I don't want to even sound deep or try to add depth to the situation, but I learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot about resilience and how to be strong and how to overcome. And I was faced with so many obstacles during that time in my life. And I overcame every single one of them. And even when I stepped out of that situation, I found other schools to work with. There was one school, out of the three schools, remember I told you I was working with three schools, and only one school was like, we don't want to fire you. Like, COVID happens to everyone, dude. Like, just heal and come back. That's the only school that was like, it happens. Just heal and come back. And I appreciate that school. And I'm still working for that school even now. You know, because the director of that school is just so amazing. So, yeah, guys. That was my COVID experience. And... This is a very different story time because usually like I always talk about boys, 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 the boys, the boys, the boys. And I just wanted to do something that was different and shed light on this COVID situation because it's everything. It's something that affects us, even if it indirectly affects you. Like COVID has done something to each and every person, you know, throughout this entire pandemic. Um, not necessarily people catching COVID, but we have been affected by COVID. Um, whether it's losing jobs, whether it's contracting the virus, whether it's being away from family, not being able to go back home. Like COVID has done something to each and every person in the world right now. Um, so I just wanted to shed light on the situation and be like, happens to the best of us and if it happens to you it's not the end of the world i just pray that you are safe and that you come out of it stronger than ever you know but yeah i hope you enjoyed the story time and i hope it was not very long um and i'll be back with another story time very soon and as always i love you for watching and i'll see you next time Square one Then we waited too long